Hello, this is Don Wasaki, Extension Soul Sinus with Oregon State University. Uh, today I'd like to visit with you about uh, plant tissue testing. You seem to have gotten quite a few questions about this the last year, and I thought it was important just to cover a few important points. Here is a uh, example of a tissue test analysis that you might receive. This tissue test analysis uh, has um, three bits of information on it. Uh, if you look across the, the top here, you'll see the, the nutrients that are being analyzed for. Then you see the actual nutrient concentrations. Then the line below that, uh, they give a range of nutrient concentrations which are typical for uh, this particular plant. In this case, it's wheat. And you'll see those ranges. Uh, these ranges uh, can mean two different things. One is it, it may be a range of all the uh, tissue nitrogen samples that lab has done. So that you know, that is the range they uh, have in their database. Uh, the other possibility that it, these ranges can be ranges that have been published in the uh, literature for uh, the particular crop, in this case it's wheat. And then below that is a graphical um, representation of, of the data and uh, what you see is a graph there of low, adequate, and high and then there's a, uh, a bar that represents the uh, percentage or the amount that's in this particular sample and whether you're low, medium, and high. And, and most tissue analysis have this some type of graphical representation like this and it, you can see whether you're low, medium, or high. Uh, there's really uh, two reasons to do tissue tests. Uh, one is to diagnose a particular problem. Uh, if you have poor performing crop and you want to know whether it's a nutrient issue or some other kind of issue, tis tissue testing can be used that way. Uh, another way uh, that tissue testing can be used is uh, in conjunction with your uh, soil test and your fertility program. You know, you've been applying nutrients in your fertilizer program. Uh, you know the amount you put on. Sometimes it's good to know, you know, is the plant actually taking these up and where, where am I with my fertility program? I may have adequate nitrogen, but I may not have adequate sulfur getting into the plant. So that is a good reason to tissue test. Uh, and usually you like to do those kind of tissue tests at least once or twice a year and have a long history of those tissue tests, just like soil tests. I have in my hand you know, two different uh, growth stages of wheat here, and uh, this next slide will show uh, the difference in nutrient concentration with the life cycle of the plant. Uh, this this plant is spring wheat, it's in growth stage six, feeks. This is in winter wheat, and it's, uh, it's about growth stage nine. This is just early elongation. This is Flag leaf emergence. And, you know, I want you to think about, you know, which one of these plants would have a higher nutrient concentration in them? This plant, an older plant, or a younger plant? And, uh, you know, you can see on this slide that this, this uh, tissue concentration is for canola, but the tissue concentration is actually the highest in a young plant. And then as you capture carbon, the the nutrient content dilutes out. So from a uh, young plant to an older plant, the concentration actually goes down. And that, and that may not be uh, obvious when you think about it, but uh, it is intuitive that young plants take up the nutrients and they, then they build the carbon. So depending on the plant stage, um, you know, the value you get back will uh, be determined by whether it's a younger plant or an older plant. The other issue that I want, I'd like you to think about is there are nutrients in the plant that some are mobile, some are uh, immobile. Um, you know, here's a, an example or a list of 
nutrients that, uh, on their mobility, and things like phosphorus, sulfur, potassium, uh, they are mobile in the plant and they go to, uh, their concentrations are usually higher in the young leaves. And then there are immobile nutrients uh, like iron and sulfur, uh, which their concentration is usually uh, a little higher in the, in the older leaves. So depending on you know, which nutrient uh, you're interested in, you, you need to know whether it's a mobile nutrient or an immobile nutrient. And the next item I'd like to talk to you about is, uh, it's easy to go out and just grab tissue to do analysis on. There's one extra step you can do to help quantify that. Uh, and in, in this photograph, uh, what we've done is, here's a spring wheat field and we've uh, sampled a square meter area. Uh, this is seven and a half inch row spacing. So we've taken four rows by 43 inches long. That, that happens to work out to a square yard. Uh, you know, this is what I would suggest you do, uh, depending on your row spacing. If you take so many rows wide by a certain length long, you can work out what a square yard is. Yeah. What's the reason for doing this? Well, it's to look at nutrient uptake per unit area. You know, we can analyze the tissue in, uh, that comes off of this. And in this photograph, you see the amount of plant tissue we've clipped from that area. That works out to about 107 pounds of dry matter uh, per acre. And then when we uh, analyze this, we get a nutrient concentration. And if I use the example uh, that w appeared in our uh, chemical analysis page, it was 3.3% it was nitrogen. So here we've got uh, an uptake of about 35 to 36 pounds of nitrogen in this crop at this stage. Uh, if you don't tie it to a known area, well, you'll, you'll get a uh, concentration, uh, but you don't, you're not able to get uh, nutrient uptake per unit area. So with just sampling in this kind of method, and, and I would suggest you, you use about three uh, replications of this, and you can composite it into one sample, but that way you get some variability and I would reserve this to one particular landscape or management unit. You know, if you're variable rate uh, applying material, you have management units. So, you know, I would collect this on a, what I would say is a representative uh, area for the field. If you have any questions uh, on um, nutrient analysis, I'd be happy to answer them. You can either give me a phone call or send me an email. And, be happy to answer those. Uh, one last thing, this is uh, wheat in the flag leaf stage. Here's a flag leaf. Uh, often what's done on hard wheats is to sample the flag leaf stage for nitrogen content and relate it to the future protein content. That, this is one thing that's done quite often in, in hard wheats. So you would just collect 100 flag leaves and send those in for analysis. Thank you and Good health to everybody.